and drama. Stefan Johansson goes off in the rain. The Golf Audi is in the gravel trap. He's lost his nose, and Johansson is, well, that's going to put a big kink in his hope for success. Look, he's spun, because there is the debris on the outside, or the left-hand side of the picture, the inside of the corner, and he has clearly spun there, perhaps collided with the tail end of a Bentley. So we need to watch very closely as the team uh, mechanics throw the damaged nose over the barriers on the far side. Johansson's still got power, but here is the images, or here are the images that we anticipated right from the beginning of the morning today. Teams hurriedly getting tyres ready. Now, in some garages, there will be mass panic in the Audi team, I doubt it. But uh, Mike Earl's arena team that run the Golf Audi will certainly be looking at the screen very intently to try and figure out what they're going to need when Johansson arrives. And of course, David, as long as the car's driving when they can get back, they're not going to be out of the race, are they? No, they're not, but uh, one thing is they're going to need an awful lot of parts to repair that car because you hit the back of the car as well. You can see the part of the rear wing hanging off, part of the rear diffusers damaged as well as everything else. It's another car off, one of the Cadillac that's cars. That's the Cadillac, that's the number five machine that was lying in ninth place. That's Eric Bernard, so Anthony Reed has we assume picked up a place from him. The marshals are going, hey, hold your horses, as he's going, push me out, push me out, and trying to gas it up. Well, I would certainly, if I was in race control, hesitate to throw a yellow flag and safety car period at the moment, but look at the speed of the cars. I could certainly go quicker in my Morris mine around there. They are uh, rim deep in water. Somebody else off, yes, David, looks like by the Armco barriers there in the, towards the top left of the picture. Looks as though there is somebody else off there, unless that's just a, a Marshall's post we can see. But lots of yellow flags waving as the snatch vehicle tries to drag the dam's car backwards out of the gravel. Into the pits comes the first car. This is the number seven car. Martin Brundle was in front of Stefan Johansson. I said we needed to watch to see if he'd been hit from behind. Look at this, it's broad sunlight. What are they going to do? The first thing they do is when they stop is fill it with fuel. They can't do anything else while they're doing that, so uh, a quick refill with fuel. Once that's done, the car will be jacked up, and then any work needed to be done on it will be done. Well, it looks like they're going for tyres, though, so uh, it looks as though he would have escaped, I think, then, without being hit. In comes Frank Beeler as well, the number one Audi. Now, I guarantee if Beeler is in, the number two car, Laurent Aiello, will continue out on slicks. Audi have got two cars, and I think they will hedge their bets if they possibly can. Just to reiterate, it is absolutely bone dry on this side of the circuit. That might not stay the case. And there is the champion Porsche having gyrated as well. Both MGs are coming into the pit. So is Olivier Beretta. So is Yannick Dalmas, who we saw spinning earlier on in the number 15 car and going off the road. And uh, so is the uh, dome of John Nielsen. Vila taking on tyres in the number one car. And it's a busy, busy pit lane down there. Off goes Brundle in the seven car. And the number eight Bentley has also stopped. Cameras didn't pick that up, but I imagine that will have been a tyre change as well. Wayne Taylor brings in his Cadillac for tyres. The third Orica prototype is in. The two Panoses keep thundering round and the safety car is out. Yellow flags and the safety car is on the circuit. Well, just uh, 15 minutes into the 24 hours of Le Mans, we already have a safety car. We're going to try and catch up with Bentley team director Richard Lloyd. There is the Labra competition Viper with heavy front end damage. It must be absolutely cats and dogs at the back of the circuit. Our view past the grandstands into the infield. Oh, my goodness me, no wonder they've stopped the race. There is a big shun down there. There is the Pilbeam Nissan. There is one of the uh, uh, Pescarolo cars. Uh, and a couple of Porsches and a David, Celine there as well. The Ray Malik Celine is in there as well on David, the left-hand side. David Terrien's Viper as well. So all French cars in there, unfortunately, apart from little uh, Pilbeam. And in fact, it's not the Malik Celine because the Malik Celine has just come into could the pits. Could be the Callaway. The, uh, so it could well be the Callaway. White car from behind. That was one of the uh, American Celines. The black and white one oh, it was. Right. Uh, could well be. This is uh, replay pictures of Stefan Johansson's car coming in. Well, he was the first to strike trouble as the rain swept across the circuit. We can't, in fact, see much farther than the back of the paddock. No, it's, it's blowing away, in fact. The dense rain is now blowing away. But look at the front of that Labra car. Yeah, that's, that's more than body work, isn't it? I'm afraid it is. He's uh, definitely bent his suspension on that car there. You can see crabbing all over the place. He's got a big queue of cars behind him trying to get in here. Now, of course, this may not be an absolute disaster for Stefan Johansson in Golf because the safety car's out, the race is neutralised at the moment. It may give them time to do some quick work and not lose too much 
time. I think he's going to lose a reasonable amount of time. There's a fair bit of work to do on that car, and the quickest thing they can do is uh, jack it up, push it inside, and uh, set about with a lot of people, because as long as you leave the car outside, you're stuck to only four people working on it. So anybody needing to do a lot of work needs to get it in very quickly. Working on the basis that car number 60, Celine, has come in, and it's car number 61, the uh, Conrad um, Celine, that's uh, stuck in the barrier along with his other four cars. Yeah, pretty good uh, process of elimination in my book. Now the number three champion Audi has come in for tyres, and uh, the American teams quite often will go for a tyre change under safety uh, car regulations or a top-up. It's a little early after 15 minutes to top up with fuel. They've just done four laps. Laurent Aiello, incidentally, I said I thought that if Bieler had stopped in the number one car, Aiello would certainly continue in the number two Audi without stopping, and he has done. There he is behind this slow Porsche. Now, obviously, behind the safety car with speeds greatly reduced, his chances of staying on in the slick shod Audi are much greater. So I think that gamble may just swing in his direction and help increase his advantage. The number three car you saw there being worked on at the rear. They're putting a new body part back on. There is Jan Lammers. He's got Martin Brundle behind him. And I don't think that Lammers has been in the pit. Unfortunately, our monitor doesn't have that column here. But uh, Aiello was leading by 40 seconds from Lammers as they crossed the line at the end of the last lap. Brundle was in third place ahead of Wallace, the two Bentley drivers third and fourth. Beeler down to fifth place, and then Blundell in sixth and Reed in seventh. Wow, that makes great reading. If only we could do that at quarter to four tomorrow afternoon, I think uh, everybody would be completely confounded. But the number 34 MG of Anthony Reed is still in the pits with the rear bodywork off. I think perhaps that may be their last hurrah. Well, this is unfortunate. This is the Keep de France, the French Federation's bid for glory at Le Mans. It's definitely looking over. That car of David Tarion is absolutely destroyed. It well, looks a more, like... More the cynical Keeper. person might suggest that perhaps the, uh, the with the Keep de France car having crashed, that uh, may well have tripped the race organisers into throwing a flag out, but I would possibly... David Murray bringing the Reynard in. So. He's sharing with Milka Duno, and uh, David's made a long trip all the way from America for this race, calling it very late notice and all but now here we are still problems they're having problems getting those cars they're pulling that uh selena out across the road they're obviously going to do that one first but uh they've really got to slow the pace down a bit haven't we this is a very dangerous time for everybody it is you can see the marshals who stand on the side of the circuit they don't stand behind the uh barriers with the yellow flags they stand actually on the circuit but uh, all the way around the circuit now you see the yellow flags there are pace cars out but because this is such a long circuit they don't have one pace car they have two pace cars um, at one point they used to have three, but they've uh, cut that down now to two pace cars. Well, Milka Duno bringing in the Dick Barber Racing at Reynard, and that car being dragged back into the garage. Not only, not only had she lost the uh, front bodywork, but also the left front wheel was stationary and off the ground. We're looking at one of the core... No, the, that is the Celine. It's actually moving, David. Now, you know uh, quite a lot about the uh, makeup of these cars. You were at Ray Mallet Limit when, looked when they were being built. Go on, give us yeah. a quick uh, rule of thumb. To it's, uh, most of it's at the back of the car, most of the engine and everything's there. So, uh, well, there you can see Milka coming in in the Dick Barber racing car, their second string entry, and that uh, left front wheel off the ground and flat shows that there is some substantial damage at the front. But again, a chance to look at the Celine. The Celine is obviously got a problem with steering, it's darting about at the front, but all the engine and everything else is at the back of the um, car, so they can manage to get that back as long as it's got some steering and they can um, move a little bit, then they'll get that car back to the... I was wondering, really wondering actually whether Tony Siley was just twitching the steering to make sure it would all uh, work before he got to a corner. Yes. I certainly would be, that's for sure. It's a very good idea. On board with Martin Brundle coming across the start line behind Jan Lammers. The safety car is out. These are the second, third and fourth place cars you're looking at. And the marshals, well, it's bad enough that they were poured on with rain in an instant, but working very hard as well to clear up the debris. And on the other side of the track there... Is the little uh, pill beam. It uh, is indeed the pill beam Nissan, run by Ray Rowan. Warren Carway and this is Martin O'Connell, the regular drivers in that one. Such a tragedy for Rowan. It's been their dream this year to come to Le Mans. It's a brand new team. They've come out of the British Formula 3 Championship. They've done two or three races. They had a very good win at Monza in the FI Sports Car Championship. They were so delighted to get this entry at Le Mans. And now, probably through no fault of the, the drivers, Martin O'Connell, they've been involved in this fairly big 